Hey guys, it's been a while. I um, was not able to do as many videos as I was planning on this summer because I had to take the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology uh, board certification exam, which was uh, like a nine and a half hour test. But that's all done now. So I have some more time to chat with you guys and explore interesting topics. Today I wanted to do a quick and informal video, again about anhedonia, but also about treatment-resistant depression. And I want to talk to you guys about one of my favorite medications ever that is rarely prescribed by psychiatrists, especially in the United States. So as I've talked about in other videos, anhedonia is a severely neglected, um, topic within psychiatry, and millions of people suffer from it. It tends not to respond to normal antidepressants. It's a risk factor for disability, lowered quality of life, and suicide, regardless if, of if someone's depression is actually technically in remission. Anhedonia makes things feel meaningless. It makes the world feel gray. Like there's no purpose to anything, you're not excited about anything, you don't actually feel any pleasure when you do things. So, um, and as I've talked about in other videos, anhedonia is highly dependent on low dopamine signaling in the reward circuitry in your brain, like the nucleus accumbens. So what do we do if someone has anhedonia and, you know, all of these antidepressants that these people are being offered are, you know, serotonergic, maybe noradrenergic, but rarely are antidepressants, at least ones that are prescribed now nowadays, significantly dopaminergic. So there's a huge, not only is anhedonia is a, is a huge neglected topic, but dopamine as well is neglected in psychiatry. There are a few ways to boost dopamine with psychoactive medicines besides controlled substances like stimulants. So low dose Abilify, because if it's partial dopamine agonism, can boost dopamine and um, improve anhedonia markedly, as long as you stay at around 2.5 to 5 milligrams, because once you start going higher, it starts actually decreasing dopamine uh, signaling in the brain. But that sweet spot, almost like a micro dose of like two, three, maybe four or five milligrams really does the trick for some reason, uh, for some people. Uh, well, butrin or bupropion is another one. That one has some modest dopaminergic activity. Um, well, I can go into that in another video. It's actually not clear how dopaminergic it is in human brains. But um, what if someone's tried Abilify, they've tried Wellbutrin, they're not feeling well and they're anhedonic still. This is where one of my favorite medicines of all time comes into, Pramipexil. The brand name is called Mirapex and uh, this is the closest thing I have found to a miracle pill for both treatment resistant depression and specifically anhedonia. In my experience, I, I've started prescribing it maybe in the past six months. And um, I started prescribing it not only because there's such a need for dopaminergic meds in psychiatry and in my anhedonic and depressed patients, but also um, I was reviewing the literature on this and there are there's an amazing amount of, there's a relatively amazing amount of literature confirming that Pramipexil is, um, is effective for unipolar depression, bipolar depression, and treatment-resistant depression. Now, there's not that much evidence yet that it specifically targets anhedonia, but um, there was a study that was being set up in the past year or two, 
and I emailed the researcher, the lead investigator, and I was like, hey, I know this isn't published yet, but you know, can you give me a rundown? Did you find that Premapexel did improve in Hedonia? Because that was the point of the trial, and he said, yes, it did. So, um, you know, hypothesis confirmed, not surprised. Boosting dopamine signaling, whether you're boosting synaptic dopamine or just agonizing or stimulating dopamine D2 or D3 receptors should definitely improve anhedonia in many, if not most, patients. Pramipexol is used all the time in modern medicine, but not in psychiatry. It's usually used for um, restless leg syndrome or Parkinson's disease. And the dosage used in both of those, but especially restless leg syndrome, tends to be very small. It can be 0 0.125, 0 0.375, 0 0.5, maybe up to a milligram. But if you're a psychiatry patient and you're depressed or anhedonic, the studies really show that it needs to be bumped usually between two and four milligrams. I've seen up to five in these studies, so a dramatically higher dose than what is used for restless leg syndrome and, and even Parkinson's disease in, in most, if not many cases at least. Pramipexel is a dopamine receptor agonist. So it's not actually increasing dopamine, but it's stimulating dopamine receptors, especially the D3 receptor. So um, this is pretty much as good as boosting dopamine since um, a neurotransmitter without an activated receptor is pointless. It's as if the neurotransmitter isn't there. So you're essentially sidestepping step one to get right to step two, where you just directly signal to the brain that dopamine is being signaled and you got to do what you got to do in the reward circuitry of the brain. So um, in my experience, you know, this is anecdotal, of course, but in my experience, about one in two patients with anhedonia or severe or treatment resistant depression respond very favorably. And it does not take one to two months like antidepressants to work. Once you get up to the like the dose that's gonna work for you, it'll work within days, if not immediately for many patients. Premipexel can cause dizziness, sedation. It can also make sleep disrupted, so you can get tired from that as well. Uh, you might get some nausea, um, dry mouth, you know, classic psych medicine stuff. Uh, although it's pretty well tolerated in most people I've, I've treated with it, even at these fairly substantial doses. And um, so those are the main common side effects. There are two weird kind of concerning side effects that you can get from this though. One of them is psychotic symptoms, specifically auditory or visual hallucinations. This can occasionally happen. This can, this will, this is a risk boosting dopamine in general. Um, any medicine can cause psychotic or pseudo psychotic symptoms in predisposed people. So um, occasionally you might hallucinate um, or even hear voices, but in my limited experience, if this happens at all, which it usually does not, the most common hallucinatory experience is like hearing weird sounds or even like music that's baked into white noise. So if you hear a fan going or like your laundry machine is going or something, washing machine, um, you might hear, it might seem as if there's like music underneath that white noise. And these uh, hallucinatory experiences are also most commonly hypnagogic in, uh, in nature, which means that you're most likely to experience them falling asleep or waking up. And that's not super concerning to me uh, for most patients because hypnagogic hallucinations are actually very normal. One in four people um, experience them at some point in their life. It's especially common in youth or in childhood and it is not a sign of mental illness uh, per se. Um, so you can get hallucinations. The second most concerning side effect is de the development of compulsive behavior. So um, this is a well-known side effect where um, when you boost dopamine enough, 
people, it, it triggers the reward circuitry, which uh, can predispose some people to becoming compulsive. So classic ones with Pramipexel is developing an urge to gamble. So if you have a history of like gambling, probably should be watched caref very carefully if tried at all. Um, other things that are um, not super uncommon is hypersexuality, compulsive masturbation, maybe porn use. Um, so compulsive habits like that can happen when you stimulate dopamine receptors with medications like Pramipexel or Rapinolol. So um, that's about it though. Most people in my experience uh, do quite well on it. And um, the studies also show that like a response rate well over 50% and uh, a staggering amount for treatment resistant depression at least for full on remission. Um, it's great to have this in my back pocket. You know, I usually try low-dose Abilify or Bupropion, Wellbutrin, but, uh, you know, if they've tried those already, I will go to Premapexel. I'll start with like 0.5 milligrams, go up by 0.5 every two weeks or so if they're tolerating it. And usually the sweet spot is between two and three milligrams, but in these studies, they've gone up to four and even five milligrams. So, um, yeah. Well, I hope you guys uh, have a great day. Leave any comments if you have any questions. Um, and of course, none of this is medical advice. Don't make any medical decisions without talking to your healthcare, healthcare provider. See ya.